Hey guys, it's me, Mr. 250, and welcome back to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. The final day trial. Let's begin. You would think the police would be like, hey, what happened to the other person we sent back there? Uh, nothing. Don't worry about them. Okay, we will not look into the matter. Excellent. And that might have been actually how that went down. This is it. Judgment Day. Today, things are going to get settled at last. A lot of things. Warg! 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 What's the big idea? Sorry, Nick. I only touched your shoulder. I guess the shock hasn't worn off from my run-in with the stun gun yesterday. Anyhow, today's the last day of the trial. Good luck, Nick. Yeah. Thanks, Maya. Edgeworth is looking glum as always. I hope Von Karma doesn't push him too hard. Whoa! What are you doing? Sorry, I'm sorry. I just thought I'd cheer you up with a pat on the back. May uh, maybe you should go outside and discharge? Right, good idea. Try not to electrocute anyone on your way out. Whoa, yeah, pal. <laughs> What's gotten into that girl? Detective Gumshoe. Morning, Mr. Edgeworth. Uh, good morning. How'd it go, Detective? Have no fear. As promised, I've captured our runaway caretaker. I just brought him in. Took all night, pal. Thanks, Detective Gumshoe. You must be tired. Actually, after that shock I got on the way in, I feel pretty good. Yogi says he's probably forgotten his own name. But that has to be a lie. Why would he want revenge on Edgeworth if he couldn't remember his past? He does remember, and I'm going to prove it. Von Karma. Couldn't we, like, prove that he had a stun gun on him? I don't know. I just, I feel like maybe there's, like, some some kind of evidence with him holding a stun gun or something that we can try to be like, yeah, he totally shocked us yesterday. Like, that, that has nothing to do with the crime at hand, but that's just kind of rude. Court is now in session for the trial of Miles Edgeworth. Lost the voice again. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Prosecution is ready. Oh, right, very well. We've reached the final day of our proceedings in this trial. I ask that the prosecution submit decisive evidence. Understood. Come on, don't be awed into silence by every little thing he says. Very well. Mr. Von Karma, your opening statement? Right. Thanks to Detective Gumshoe's efforts, the boat rental shop caretaker has been arrested. In yesterday's trial, the defense asserted that the caretaker was the murderer. However, the caretaker is yet to confirm this. I would like to ask the defense to cross-examine him as much as necessary. Very well. Please bring the witness into the courtroom. Still asleep. Ladies and gentlemen of the court, I believe you all remember our witness. He lives in the boat rental shop on the lake, from where he witnessed the incident. In addition, he has currently lost memory of his name and identity. Witness, why did you run away yesterday? The witness was not running away, as he will now testify. Uh, I see. Very well. Please begin your testimony. Why I left court? I'm really sorry about just leaving yesterday like I did. But I wasn't running away or nothing. I uh, went to buy some food for Polly, see? I figured he got nothing to do with this incident anyhow. 
I mean, I need one of those motive things, right? And I don't got one. So my testimony yesterday stands as is. Hmm. Very well. Let's begin the cross-examination, shall we? He has to know his name. Yanni Yogi. You're Yanni Yogi, and I'm going to prove it. I don't even know any yogis. Except Yogi Bear. <laughs> I'm really sorry about just leaving yesterday like I did. I call what you did running away and not just leaving. You heard Larry's testimony and realized you were in danger. Now, Mr. Wright, no need to rush to conclusions. As I said, the witness was not running away. Listen to the testimony. He sure seems relaxed. In fact, they both do. Von Karma and Yanni Yogi. But, uh, I wasn't running away or nothing. Then why did you leave? It's just about to say why. It's so hard for you to just quietly listen when someone is talking. If I sat quietly, Edgeworth would be guilty in three minutes. I, uh, went to buy some food for Polly, see? Food? Oh, Polly is a bit of a gourmand, you see. She only eats these high-quality bird pellets from France. We only have them in the big pet shop downtown. But you weren't arrested until this morning. Why didn't you go back to the caretaker shack? Uh, well, kinda got lost, you see. The witness has trouble remembering things sometimes. When the police apprehended him, he was on his way back to the shack. Yeah, right. Nice try, Von Karma. No one's going to believe that. Mm, I see. So he was lost. All the voices are getting mixed in, I can tell. This is awful. Please, Your Honor, come to your senses. I also got something caught in my throat, too. Ugh. I figured I got nothing to do with this incident anyhow. You've lost much of your memory, is that correct? Uh, yep. Seems like it. Then how could you know that you didn't have anything to do with this incident? Um... Or... Or maybe you're lying about not having your memory, hmm. You know exactly who you are. The witness has testified quite clearly that he has no memory of who he is. If you claim he's lying, then show the court proof. Ugh. How am I supposed to prove what's going on in that old... Codger's head? That's impossible. Hmm. I'm glad you've come to your senses, Mr. Wright. Very well, witness. Please continue. I mean, I'd need one of those emotive things, right? And I don't got one. How can you say you had no motive? I say you do. You had a grudge against Edgeworth and the victim, Robert Hammond. That's why you took revenge on them, right? Please don't make me repeat myself, Mr. Wright. This witness has no memory of anything beyond several years ago. You can't hold a grudge. It's impossible. I have to prove he's lying about his memory. Otherwise, it's going to be the same thing over and over until the trial ends. Might I say something, Mr. Wright? Yes. Yes, Your Honor? You've been saying the same thing now over and over. You've been calling the witness's memory of the past, or lack thereof, into question. But does this really have anything to do with the current case? Of course, Your Honor. The witness has said that he's had nothing to do with this case. No motive. Both of these statements are lies. Order! 
Order! Mr. Wright, serious problem with your claim. Or are you saying... Are you saying you know who this witness is? Of course, Your Honor. Ho oh, ho! Now this is interesting. I would like to know myself. So, who is he? Don't play dumb, Von Karma. Mr. Wright, please tell us this witness's name. Gregory Edsworth. His name is Gregory Edsworth. Uh, Mr. Wright? All of us here remember what Gregory Edsworth looked like. And he looked nothing like this, believe me. Wow, that's pretty harsh, Your Honor. I'm going to have to penalize you for your wild claim. <laughs> Alright. His name is Yanni Yogi, a former court bailiff. Yogi? That name seems familiar. Oh! Donna Yogi! From the DL6 incident! I thought the judge would have heard of it. It was such a famous case. But what does this mean? Your Honor, if this man is Mr. Yogi, then he has a clear motive. Just as I thought, Mr. Wright. Jumping to conclusions again, Mr. Wright. This man, this witness, is Yanni Yogi? Fascinating. However, how do you propose to prove this to the court? This is a court of law, as you may recall. You need proof. And allow me to repeat once more that the witness has lost his memory. This is it. I have to do this now. If I can't prove he's Yogi right here, right now, then I've got nowhere else to go. Nick, how are you going to prove it? How can you prove that he's Yanni Yogi? When did you get back in here? It's okay. It's actually quite simple. Your Honor, please take this man's fingerprints. Then we'll compare them to the fingerprints on file for Yanni Yogi 15 years ago. I see. Makes sense. <laughs> but you see, he has no hands. Huh? I'm so very, very sorry, Mr. Wright. W why? The witness has no fingerprints. What? Why no fingerprints? In a freak fingerprint accident years ago. Uh, you see... Before I worked as a caretaker, I worked at a chemical plant. I burned my fingers working with the stuff. Yep. Definitely didn't do that yesterday. Yep. What? Yogi, you sneak. You burned your fingerprints off to hide your past. Hmm. Well, if the witness has no fingerprints, I guess we will not be able to prove his identity. No. Ha <laughs> ha. What will you do, Mr. Wright? Uh... Hmm... Seems the case has been decided, no? No... I know what happened. I know everything. I... I just can't prove it. But no, I can't let it in like this. I can't lose. There has to be another way. There is no one who can testify as to who this witness is. No one. Nick, what are we going to do? I didn't even consider that he might have erased his fingerprints. And we're kind of taking their word on it, like we're not even going to double check. Like, ah, uh, can someone take a look at his fingerprints and see if they're not there? What do I do? Ha ha ha. Well, Mr. Wright, perhaps you'd like to cross-examine the parrot for a little comic relief, hmm? Yeah, yeah, very funny. You're a sore winner, Von Karma. Wait a second. Cross-examine the parrot? What is it, Nick? No, you're not going to... Your Honor. The defense would like to take Mr. Von Karma up on his proposal. Take Mr. Von Karma up? On his... Proposal? Exactly, Your Honor. I would like to cross-examine the witness's pet parrot. I don't know if you could do that. 
Oh, oh, order! Order! Uh, well, what do you think, Mr. Von Karma? Need you even ask? This is a farce, I object. Objection! I object too! Wait a second. You were the one who suggested I cross-examine the pair of Von Karma. I have a right to do as you suggested. Do you really? Hmm. Well, if you're so desperate, then please be my guest. Of course, should you go through with this, and nothing comes of it, then I hope you're ready for the consequences. Nick, this is crazy. Well, still want to go through with your little game? <laughs> no, maybe not. You know, come to think of it, this is a really stupid idea. <laughs> I've heard of desperate men grasping at straws. But this is the first time I've heard of men grasping at macaws. <laughs> oh, I... Oh, it's so funny I forgot how to make a joke. <laughs> oh, 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 that was awful. Think, Von Karma is a perfectionist in all things. He's probably rigged every piece of evidence in all the testimonies. If I can't do the unexpected, I've got no chance of winning. Your Honor, I've thought about this proposal. And I'm going to do it. I'm going to cross-examine the parrot. Ridiculous. Bailiff, bring in the parrot. Now we wait for the bailiff to go through 27 screens to get to the parrot. Come back. That's quite a bird. Please tell us your name. Name. Witness is ignoring me. <laughs> Maybe it's because he's a bird. It must hurt to be ignored by a bird. <clears throat> Very well, witness. Who is your owner? Uh, please uh, testify for us. Hello? Hello? Can I cross-examine that? Hmm. Certainly the most concise testimony we've had so far. Very well. Begin your cross-examination. Right. What are you going to do, Nick? <laughs> I don't know. What do we do, man? Hmm. Who is your owner? Hello? Hello, squat. Witness, you can't just say hello and expect us to get anywhere. I want you to testify. Maya, you talk to her. Right, uh, what do I say? What's the safe number? Maybe I'll get her to say the number of that safe. Huh? The safe? Why? Let's just try to get her to say anything, okay? Polly, what was the number of the safe in the shack? One, two, two, eight. One, two, two, eight. Hi. What a reckless parrot. Well, Mr. Wright, you aren't claiming that this number has something to do with the caretaker. Actually, it does. It does. That's why I had her say it. Ha! Huh. Ridiculous. How can the number to a safe tell us who the caretaker is? Show us your proof. What could possibly link this number to the caretaker's true identity? Um... I mean, he took our evidence, right? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about all this. Take that! The DL6 case file? What is this obsession you have with that case? Mr. Wright, where in the file is something related to that safe number? You know, I didn't even pay attention. Hold on a second. Is there really something in there? Is it the date? 
One, okay, one, two, two, eight. That's the date. Okay, gotcha. Sorry, let me, I didn't, I didn't catch the actual screen. Hold on. Case summary. It's on the case summary page. Case summary? Specifically, the date on which the DL6 incident occurred. The date of the incident. December 28th. I didn't actually think we were going to get anywhere with the safe number. Why, that's today's date. 15 years ago. And the number on that safe is 1228. Oh, he uses the date of the DL6 incident as the number for his safe, Your Honor. That's how important that date was to him. I see. It certainly is an interesting coincidence. People often do set their secret numbers to dates. Objection. Bah, this is not tangible proof. I set my ATM card number to, card's number to 0001 because I'm number one. This has nothing to do with a date. Nothing. Hmm. Indeed. Alone, it is a little weak for evidence in a murder trial. We would need some other cooperating evidence. Where am I going to find that? Nick, we're getting closer. One more. If we can just get one more piece of evidence. Right, but why? Hmm. Very well, witness. You may continue. I just imagine it's like, Yvonne Karma's like, I just got a notification from my bank that all of my money is gone. <laughs> Ow. Okay, so maybe we need to attack the dots. Witness, you're here to speak. You must speak to me. Frankly? I can't believe that you're speaking to a parrot. Well, okay, so we need I think we need to go and hit this again. And then choose one of the other options, maybe. I think it's the have we forgotten something. Remember, two days ago. Polly, Polly, have we forgotten something? Don't forget DL6, Quack. If I can get Polly to say that here, that will prove that the caretaker had something to do with DL6. Uh, Polly? Have we forgotten something? Hello? Hello, Squack. Oh, no! That's not what you're supposed to say. Forgot. Something we forgot. Hello, hello, Squack. Uh-oh. It's not working, Nick. She won't say it. This is ridiculous. Why won't she say it? <laughs> Something the matter, Mr. Wright? Wait. Don't tell me Von Karma expected this. He couldn't have retrained the parrot. Could he? Did he train her not to respond when we asked if we'd forgotten anything? Wow. That's bad. I'm the perfect parrot trainer. What's your name? Maybe I should get her to say her name. Polly, Polly, what's your name? Polly, Polly, crack. Mr. Wright? I think we've established that this parrot is named Polly. Does this have anything to do with the owner's identity? Of course. Yes, it does. Ha! Fascinating. You claim that the parrot's name will prove her owner's identity. Then show us this proof. Nick, don't you think you're taking the bluffing a little too far? Listen, we're not here to answer the question of who is the caretaker. We're here to prove that he is Yanni Yogi. All we have to do is tie the name Polly to Yogi. Somehow? Your Honor. The proof that the parrot's name reveals the caretaker's identity is... What?
So his fiance's name is Polly. I would... Yeah, I think that's where we need to link it to. That would be the suspect, uh, the suspect data page. That's quite a large file you have there. Which page is this proof on, then? Show us or stop wasting our time. Very well. Mr. Wright, please show us the page. Where in this file is the information connected to the parrot's name? It's on the suspect data page. This page is all the information about Yanni Yogi. Right after he was arrested. His fiance committed suicide, see? Hmm. Indeed, it does say that, yes. What was his fiance's name? Polly Jenkins. Polly! Exactly, Your Honor. He remembered the name of his fiance who committed suicide. That's why he named his parrot after her. I see. I guess that is possible. Bah, a mere coincidence, that's all. My granddaughter has a dog she calls Phoenix. Well, Mr. Phoenix Wright, does that make you my granddaughter's fiance? Wait, ho wait, hold on, what? I thought you said it was a dog. You oh, I see. She's only seven years old. That's enough. I think we've reached a conclusion here. This is a mere coincidence, that's all. True, that is a possibility. However, two coincidences at the same time seems more like a pattern to me. What are you saying? Summon the caretaker of the boat shop. Immediately. Oh, he ran away again. <laughs> Witness. Tell us your name. Wait. This witness he doesn't remember. No. It's okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I've accomplished what I've wanted to do. I'm done. <laughs> Nick, he looks totally different. This is the real Yogi, I think. Finally. He's been acting feeble to hide his true identity. Acting... For 15 years. Well, let me ask you again. Please state your name for the court. My name is Yanni Yogi. 15 years ago, I served as a bailiff in this very court. He looks so tall, too. Look at him. Order! Order! Yanni Yogi. So, it was you who killed Robert Hammond? And tried to frame Miles Edgeworth for his death. Yes, it was me. I did it. They put me on the witness stand 15 years ago. Robert Hammond, he said I was mentally unsound. He told me it would make me innocent. Get me off the hook. So, I pretended to have brain damage. I was innocent, really. But he didn't believe me. We won the trial, but I lost everything. I lost my job, my fiance, my social standing. Then this year, 15 years later, a package arrived. It was a letter and a pistol. The plan was written out in careful detail. It was a plan for me to take my revenge on the people who ruined my life. I didn't care who had sent it. I thought this was my chance. After 15 years, this was it. Finally, a chance to have my revenge on Robert Hammond and Miles Edgeworth. I have no regrets. Wait a moment. Revenge? Against Miles Edgeworth? What do you mean? I'm not at liberty to speak on that matter. Why don't you ask Mr. Edgeworth yourself? Anyway, I admit it. I was the one who killed Robert Hammond. Well, that was pretty easy. Von Karma. Where's Mr. Yogi? Under arrest, Your Honor. I saw no room for error in his confession. Then, the defendant, Miles Edgeworth, is innocent, in this case at least. Hmm. Very well. Will the defendant please take the stand? There are 
are few mysteries left unsolved. Or a few, I should say. Still, you are cleared of suspicion for this particular case. So I would like to pass judgment on the murder of Mr. Robert Hammond. Any objections? I don't believe it. Why isn't Von Karma saying anything? Very well. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Not guilty. Get the confetti out. It's what we pay you for, jury. That is all. The court is adjourned. <laughs>